Hello everyone, this is Ava Ciola with the Pensbury Channel. Today we are joined by Robert Bob Costa, an investigative journalist in our nation's capital, former reporter for the Washington Post, analyst for NBC News and MSNBC, moderator of the Washington Week on PBS, and most importantly, a member of the Pensbury High School class of 2004. Thank you for joining us today, Bob. Thank you, Ava, great to be here. Of course. So given the recent release of your book, Peril, I'm sure you've already answered enough questions about it <laughs> and are ready for some new ones. So I have a few for you about another novel that you were involved with, Wonderland, mm. as well as your experience growing up in Pensbury and a few questions about your career. So for those of you that are unfamiliar with the book Wonderland, it is a novel written by senior sports illustrated author Michael Bamberger about life in our high school. So how did you initially get involved with Michael Bamberger? It was a little bit surreal, Ava, because there was a, a random man walking around Pensbury, and I said to a few teachers, who is this guy? And it turned out he was a writer for Sports Illustrated named Michael Bamberger, and he had heard about our prom on local news, on 6ABC, and he wanted to come maybe write an article for a magazine about our prom. But after spending a few weeks here, he went to football games and basketball games. He really became intrigued by Pensbury as a community, as a place. And he said to himself, I'm going to write a book about the prom and how they put it together in our high school gym. It's one of the rare high schools that still has a, a prom in the gymnasium. And as Michael Bamberger was going about his job as a journalist, walking around the halls of Pensbury, I went up to him one day and said, Mr. Bamberger, I'm Bob Costa. I'm a junior here at Pensbury. Uh, I'd like to help you with your book and maybe be a tour guide of sorts. And for the rest of the 2002-2003 school year, Bamberger would be in this room hanging out with Al Wilson, your dad, yeah. Frank Ciola, Harry Stymus, Mr. Mahoney, and we'd have these chats about Pensbury, about the prom, here in this studio, Studio 230, 230, and we'd talk about life and politics and media and school. And long story short, Ava, he ended up writing this book that comes out in 2000. Three, and it comes out in May or June of 2003 when I'm a junior, and it ends with John Mayer not playing our prom. We, I had pursued him and it didn't happen. But then by the time the paperback comes out a year later in May of 2004, John Mayer finally agreed to come play the Pensbury prom. So the paperback, in my opinion, ends in a little bit of a better way than the hardcover. So what was your initial plan to approach John Mayer? Was it kind of a spur of the moment thing or had you planned this for a while? It, it was just a long slog. I had no connection to John Mayer, but I decided to go up to New York City and meet with his manager, a guy named Michael McDonald, who at the time was probably in his 20s or 30s, a young, hip music industry guy. And I said to him, you gotta have John Mayer come play our prom. And he wasn't really into the idea, because why would he, John Mayer come play a random school's prom? It's not like he's playing his home school prom. But he ends up coming, uh, in part just because of persistence. I just was, I was annoying. I was annoying. And, uh, but I was annoying in a good way. And I just kept asking, why doesn't he come? Why doesn't he come? And I guess I wore John Mayer down a little bit. Uh, and I, I think John Mayer appreciated the experience a lot. Uh, it was interesting, though. I ran into him a few years later. It was January of 2013. It was at the U.S. Capitol, and President Obama was having his second inaugural address. So a lot of VIPs are there. I'm there as a reporter, and so there's a celebrity section right near where the reporters are. And I see coming up the, the pathway John Mayer and his girlfriend at the time, Katy Perry. And John Mayer comes close to me, and I hadn't seen him in a few years since Pensbury. And so I, I waved at him, I said, John, it's Bob Costa from Pensbury High School. He pauses and he looks at me and he goes, of course you're here. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic story. You spoke earlier about how you recently wrote a chapter for a book, Letters to Your Freshman Self. I did. Yes, so if you could go back and tell your freshman self in Pensbury, 14 or 15 year old Bob Costa, mm -hmm. one thing, what would that be? Well, I think if you're a freshman in high school, you just have to socialize as much as possible because whether you're a freshman in high school or college, everyone's going to experience at some level culture shock. And I just wish I could have told myself that when I was in high school and in college to chill out a little bit more, to not take it so seriously when you don't have your best friends immediately, when you don't have your total social bearings immediately. It's very easy, especially in an age of Instagram, 
where we're all following everyone else all the time and everyone's curating their lives to a point where it seems like many of your friends are living perfect lives or amazingly social lives, that you can't get pulled into what I would call like the riptide of observation where you're watching everyone else seemingly live these certain lives. You gotta build your own life and have your own friendships and, and experiences and focus on that. And if you can do that more, whether you're in high school or in college, you'll often have a better experience because what you're doing is real versus an observation or some kind of passive uh, anxiety about watching social media. I think that's tremendous advice that we all should take. Mm. Thank you. Now, do you keep in touch with any of your friends from Pensbury now? Well, I probably keep in too much touch with some of my teachers. <laughs> I think Ciola sometimes thinks maybe well, enough, Costa, enough. But uh, Mr. Medoff, he came to the event at Pensbury today. He was my speech and debate coach. Al Wilson uh, was my, he taught PHS TV for years. I'm gonna get together with him for lunch tomorrow uh, in, in Yardley, where, near where I grew up. And so I keep in touch with uh, Mr. Mahoney, Mr. Wilson, Mr. Ciola, uh, Harry Stymus, uh, still involved with Pensbury. He was a close friend of mine in high school. So I keep in touch with people. It's tough though, I mean, high school friends People move, and I was kind of the last pre-social media era. Like Facebook was just becoming big when I went to college. Mm -hmm. But when I was in high school, no one was on social media, no one. So it was probably the last time you could really disappear from your high school circle. Do you have any fun stories from your time here at Pensbury, or oh is there gosh. any times that stick out? Too many times. <laughs> I mean, we just had so much fun here at Pensbury. Oh, Pensbury Channel, we used to call it PHS TV. Mm -hmm. And we used to pretend we were, and we were a legitimate media organization, and we would get tickets to go see the Eagles. When the Eagles with Donovan McNabb as their quarterback were doing well, we would be on the sidelines, I'd be in the locker room. It was wild, I mean, you would walk around, these players coming out of the showers, screaming at reporters, and we'd be there with our cameras and our microphones talking to these players. I went into the locker room of the Sixers as a high school student, interviewing all, you know, Iverson and all these people. And it was amazing the doors that were open to Pensbury students just because we decided to show up and we did things the right way. And it was such a lesson to me early on that you can get in the room. You sometimes think these rooms, whether it's the music industry or sports, are somehow not accessible to people who have just normal lives. But if you just sometimes do things the right way, you can get in these rooms. And I mean, there was a band called Eve Six who was famous when I was in high school. Probably no one remembers them that much now, but he's actually, the lead singer is popular on social media. They came to Pensbury, they had a great time. I picked them up in Philly, got them cheesesteaks, did a whole PHS TV special. They did a concert here, Maroon 5 did a concert here. Uh, John Mayer, of course, at the prom. Uh, we just had a lot of fun. We just kind of threw the paint and spaghetti at the wall, see what stuck. And it, 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 there was no right or wrong a lot. We would just try to have fun. Absolutely, do you think that working with PHS TV was the first stepping stone For in sure. your current I mean, career? It was great. I mean, it's crazy to think I was hosting a show in this room, and then I ended up hosting a show on PBS National. And I've been on TV, I've been on every, almost too many TV shows. And it all comes back to this. If you can do it here, you can do it anywhere. There's no secret sauce to any of this, except just going out and doing it. But to have the chance to do PHS TV, I just treasure it because sometimes you just gotta do something to have the confidence to know you can do it. Absolutely. And post-college graduation, which was your first job? Well, I uh, post-college, I worked at the Wall Street Journal for about four months mm -hmm. as a fellow, kind of a writing fellow reporter. Then I got a master's degree in politics at the University of Cambridge in England. And then I worked at a magazine called National Review covering politics. And then I went to the Washington Post almost eight years ago, uh, January of 2014. I've been there since, then at PBS, uh, still with the Post, just on leave. Um, and now doing the book. So as one of the top journalists in your field, do you think that there is a, a special recipe or a key to success? Mm -hmm. I think so, so much of success is not quitting. I mean, it comes back to what I was saying about being a freshman. A lot of people who are more talented than me have just kind of been rattled by ups and downs in their careers and they kind of fade out. And I think what Pensbury taught me was that when you go to a big school, with a lot of different personalities and a lot of different people, you're, you're encountering social situations and educational situations that will leave you kind of seasoned. So when you go to Maryland, you're coming out of a big high school 
or if you encounter some trouble or some strange dynamics, it's not going to rattle you because you've seen a lot at Pensbury in the best way and sometimes not in the best way. And because of that experience, you, you I think, are ready for life in a way that others are not. Uh, and and I, I have such confidence in what you're going to do at Maryland. I'm so I'm happy you're going to be there. It'll be fun to root you on because I live in Washington. So it's, it's fun uh, that a, a Pensbury star is going to be at a nearby school. I think that's exciting. Uh, but I think for, for me, you know, it's just about going with the story, staying with it. And a lot of this comes down to hard work. And I'm sure it's the same in athletics. I'm not a, uh, an athlete. But to really succeed, it's sometimes that micro thing, it's the intangible of who's going to put in a little bit more effort. So what is the next step for you in your career? We shall see. It's open-ended. I'm going to always go back, I think, to reporting. I'm going to go back to the post. But I do think about a year ago today, we're in mid-November, I had no idea that a year from that day I have, would have written a book. It was never my plan to write a book this year, this past year. It was just not my plan. But the opportunity presented itself. And I, I kind of took that divergent path because it seemed like the right choice at the time. And who knows what next year will bring? I mean, I don't know what the story's going to look like. I don't know how things are going to unfold nationally or personally. You just don't know. You hope for the best. But whatever happens, whether it's a new opportunity, a new challenge, I just want to stay steady, uh, stay cool, remember what I learned at Pensbury, and uh, keep moving and, and be willing to change, be willing to adapt. Uh, and the hardest thing in life sometimes is forcing yourself to accept change. Can you accept that things change? It's never going to be the same when you go to Maryland. It's a new environment, and that's good. It doesn't mean it's negative, but it's just new. And that, that for me, it's like with a new story or a new job, you just have to accept that it's a changed environment. So I'm kind of excited about whatever next year brings. We're all excited to keep following and watching. Thank you. I really appreciate being here. Of course. Once again, this is Ava Ciola joined by Bob Costa for the Pensbury Channel. Thank you so much for watching.